Ladies and gentlemen, before you buy a luxury watch, you need to have an informed opinion. You need to know what the ratio of the service cost is to the value of the luxury watch. Doesn't that make sense? Can we all agree on that? Yes. So today we're going to talk about getting a Freddie Patek luxury watch. Freddie Patek, the most famous luxury watch uh, that we know of, the first luxury watch, Freddie Patek. McMahon, Freddie Patek is a shortstop for the Kansas City Royals. He played in the early 70s when you were a kid and you had his baseball cards. Stop with the Freddie Patek stuff. I think you're talking about Patek Philippe. No, Freddie Patek. I'm just going to call it Freddie Patek. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take French lessons. All right, here, uh, here's what I want to talk about today. Buying a luxury watch. You know, the average non-watch guy, he doesn't know a lot about luxury watches, but he has heard about uh, Rolex, perhaps Breitling, perhaps Omega. The average non-watch guy has heard of those things. What the average non-watch guy doesn't even think about, this is not even on his radar screen, is service costs. And so what happens is, the non-watch guy might have a rich Uncle Ronnie, and Uncle Ronnie gives non-watch guy a Daytona, a Rolex Daytona, one of those chronographs. And the nephew was like, whoa, this is unbelievable, I got myself a free Rolex. And so, you know, five years pass, and the Rolex is not keeping time the way it's supposed to, so he takes it in, and, uh, you know, the watch... A uh, person says, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have it back for you uh, in a month or two. And the, uh, the nephew was like, wow, I don't get my Rolex for like two months. Oh, my gosh. So two months pass, and uh, he gets his Rolex with a uh, $1,600 bill. And it's like, whoa, I thought this was free. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is free. What planet were you born on, man? We're paying the piper. we got to know what the service costs are. So... Let me tell you my personal story regarding service costs. Um, recently I sold a lot of watches and I was hungering for a luxury watch, which for me cost $3,000, the Tudor Black Bay Steel. And uh, before I bought it, I thought I'd better consult with Don. Don is a finance guy. Don wears a lot of luxury watches that cost over $10,000. He has clients, some of them who work for Rolex. His clients uh, make o over half a million a year or more. They wear $50,000 watches. I thought I better write to Don. And here's what I wrote to him. Don, I seek your advice. I'm inclined to sell enough uh, watches to fund an exit watch. A Tudor Black Bay Steel 79730 with an in-house movement that is relatively new with no track record of reliability. The $3,000 cost of the watch is less of a concern than ongoing reliability and maintenance costs. Any thoughts? Don replied to me. Maintenance will be about $800 every seven years. That's because you're going to have to replace the spring. So you're paying for maintenance. It's one-third the cost of the watch, and it doesn't have the resale value of a Rolex. You're essentially getting a Mini Cooper to the BMW, but you're paying BMW repair costs. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Are you comfortable paying service costs that are one-third or more of the value of the watch? No right answer. It's just a personal preference, but I just want it to be based on you having an informed opinion. He goes on to write, spring replacements are common because they're made of silicone. They are more fragile and can break easily, so if the spring breaks, you have to pay for it, and often uh, they can't get the part right away. You might not see your watch for several months. The Omega silicone watches have the same issue, but they don't use chronometer-grade springs on the Seamaster Diver 300. They still use the old Niverox which is basically the same as the elaborated movement spring, and it's made out of nickel, and it easily gets magnetized. In addition to paying for a new spring, you'll have to deal with other issues. For example, my buddy had a Tudor Black Bay bronze, and the bezel seized. He just sent it in for repair because the bronze metal has too tight of a tolerance, and it rushed underneath. 
And I was already scared. I was already like the uh, lion in The Wizard of Oz when he first sees uh, the great wizard and the lion runs through the palace and crashes through the window. I was already there, but Don wasn't done. Oh no. He says, uh, you want to hear about the joys of luxury watch ownership? It's going to be about $1,000 to get my GLC service. And I'm going to lose my watch for six months while they work on it. I'm looking forward to that like a root canal. You know, uh, Tudor Turtle, man, he's this cartoon character I used to watch, man. He'd always bite off more than he could chew. He'd go to Mr. Wizard and say, I want to be a football player. I want to be a lumberjack. I want to be a sheriff, a highway patrolman. And, uh, you know, he, he never was suited for these professions. And uh, he'd always get into some life-threatening crisis. And uh, the magical wizard, who was this lizard who lived in a tree, would always have to save him. He would brandish his wand and he would say, uh, you know, druzzle, drazzle, drizzle, drone. Time for this one to come home. Sometimes you need uh, to come home to reality. So who should buy a, a luxury watch? Well, again, you know, there's no absolute answer. I, th I just want you to make an informed decision. I asked Don, what, what's the average salary of his clients who wear these luxury watches? And he said, 350 k and when he said that, you know, here I am, just some dude in the suburbs, slogging through the suburban life here. When he said that, you know, a light bulb went on in my head. It's like, if you're the dude who drives a Tesla, $1,000 service charge is a drop in the bucket. If you're the dude who gets bored with your kitchen so that every five years you tear it down and you put in a, a refresh that costs two hundred dollars then um, $1,000 service charge is a drop in the bucket. If you're the dude who every summer you take your family to Maui or Florence, Italy, and you have uh, top-rate hotel accommodations and you fork out 30 k every summer on a vacation, $1,000 on a, a service charge is nothing. But what about, you know, people like me, man? Do I want to have a Tudor tur turtle moment? Drazzle, drizzle, drizzle, drone. Time for this one to come home. Tell me what you think about that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Until next time, I'm out.